So in this video, let's assume that we are always talking about certain vector space and it was a concept we explored in the last two videos. And now the concept in this video is that uh, we talk about a vector u. We call it a linear combination of a set of vectors v1 up to vn if there actually exist certain constant such that um, the vector u can be written as the right hand side of the current equation. And um, let's look at an example now. So uh, let's say you're given two vectors, v1 and v2. And I would like to ask you whether you're able to write u as a linear combination of v1 and v2. I think the answer is obvious, right? Because um, we can spot it out quite easily, especially, you know, in this case, um, the v1 is basically the unit vector along the x-axis and the v2 is the unit vector along the y-axis, right? And I think in this case, it's quite easy to express uh, the vector 4, 5 in terms of 4 times v1 plus 5 times v2, right? And in that case, because such a constant exists, and we call you a linear combination of the vectors v1 and v2. Let me write it down here. Obviously, you can try to imagine what happens, maybe if we talk about higher dimensional space, or maybe I give you other kind of vectors in the xy plane. It may take a bit longer time to determine whether certain vector is a linear combination of certain set of vectors, right? And let's look at the next example. Please look at the given vectors here. And you can see what happens. Uh, each vector has the x coordinate, y coordinate, and the z coordinate, which means basically I'm talking about the vector space, the three dimensional space, right? And I'm asking you the given vector w is the linear combination of the v1 and v2. And I think this one is not that obvious. So we have to do some calculations now. And let's write down the vector w first. And if we can find certain constants, c1, c2, such that, um, we have got such a vector equation. Then the answer to this problem is yes, right? And uh, let's see whether you're able to find these two constants. And I think the right-hand side can be simplified a little bit. So now you see for such a vector equation, or you can treat it as a matrix equation, right? And um, we can actually uh, equate each coordinate one by one. Let's see what happens. So you can see for each coordinate, if you make them equal on the left and the right side, basically now we have got three equations. And please recall the goal is the following. So please look at what I've written down inside the bracket. And the fact is that if you're able to find the variable C1, C2 inside this linear system, you can think of this as a linear system of three equations and two unknowns, C1, C2. Then in that case, we call W a linear combination of the vectors V1 and V2. And um, you see, basically, theoretically, now you're going back to solving a linear system. And we have seen this kind of problem for many times already. And now the problem is you actually have three equations and only two unknowns, right? And what you can do is uh, maybe you can forget about the last equation now and solve for the first two equations first. And then uh, we have to see whether the solutions you find in the first two equations are compatible with the last equation. Maybe that's the way to go through in this problem. Let me write it down here. So now you see I'm just writing down the first two equations and because we learned the Gaussian elimination already, we can actually put in the two equations like this. And you see this one is the coefficient matrix we have. And for the Gaussian elimination, we can make this zero by updating the row two by using row two minus two times row one, right? So in that case, we are getting zero at this spot. And this spot is going to be what? It's going to be four minus two times six, right? Which is minus eight. And this number is going to be two minus two times nine, which is minus 16. You see, and uh, let's solve this problem now. You see, based on the second equation here, we understand that C2 is actually two. And we can look at the first equation to solve for the C1, right? And basically C1 is what? C1 is nine minus 12, which is minus three, right? So it looks like we have, we're able to find the solution C1, C2. However, uh, we haven't used the last equation. The last equation matters a lot because it is inside our system. We need to check that our current solution C1 of C2 actually satisfy the last equation in the system. And um, let's check it together. So you see, if you do the computation C1 plus two times C2, you're getting only one plus one. And um, you see the left-hand side is actually minus seven, right? So it means it is not the same as minus seven. So it means what? It means the equation three is not satisfied by our solution inside the 
equation one and equation two, right? It means uh, we don't have a compatible solution for all the three equations. And it basically means that we have no solution C1, C2 for the whole system. Let me write it down here. So basically now uh, we understand there's no solution for the system. It basically means that the vector W at the beginning cannot be written as a linear combination of V1 and V2. So I write it down here. So you see that's the solution to this problem. And let's look at one more example now. And now let's look at this vector space of polynomials such that each polynomial has degree at most two. And we explain it already. We can treat it as a vector space in the abstract sense. And each polynomial is basically a vector. And the vector addition is basically the polynomial addition. And scalar multiplication is also understood very well. And um, let me give you the following vectors now. So you see, I'm giving you a polynomial Q. And I would like to ask you whether Q can be written as a linear combination of the three vectors here. And once again, uh, let's write down the computation we need. And let me put the polynomial Q on the left-hand side. And let's assume that uh, we are able to find such constant C1, C2, C3, which actually satisfy this equation. And um, let's put in the polynomials one by one on the right-hand side. So you see, um, our goal is to find the constants that satisfy this equation, right? And uh, the way to find it is we have to align the terms one by one. For example, you can group the constant term together and then you can group the x term together and the end is you can group the x squared term together. So I'm saying that you have to group the similar terms together like this and let me write down the answer here. You see now for this updated equation, you can compare term by term, for example, uh, for this equation to be satisfied for the variable x, for all values of x, we understand that uh, it essentially means the constant term must be the same, and similarly, the x term must be the same, and the x squared term at the end must be the same. So it means basically now you have three equations coming from comparing the terms that are similar, right? Like the constant term can be together and so forth. And let me write down the three equations now. So you see, essentially now, once again, you are left with a linear system to solve. So you have to try your best to solve for the three unknowns, right? And, um, let's write it in a matrix form. So obviously, we can carry out the Gaussian elimination here. But please recall at the beginning, I was asking you whether the Q is a linear combination of the three vectors P1 to P3, right? And um, theoretically, if you are able to get such solution C1 to C3. It basically means the answer to the problem is yes, right? And if you recall what we learned about the properties of determinant for such a matrix, um, let me write down the fact here. See, if you find the determinant of the coefficient matrix, in case it is non-zero, we automatically understand that there are exactly one solution C1 to C3 for our current linear system. So it means, um. Basically, what you need to do now is um, instead of using Gaussian elimination to solve for it, you can simply check the determinant. If the determinant is non-zero, we know this solution, C1 to C3. It automatically means that in the first two lines of this page, we can find a solution C1 to C3, right? So it means that the answer is yes to our problem. The Q is actually the linear combination. So it means that the only thing we need to do is to find the determinant of the coefficient matrix here. And you can easily see that the determinant is actually non-zero. So it means the answer is yes. We should be able to find the solution C1, C2, C3 by either the Kramer's rule or the Gaussian elimination. And I can write the answer here. The answer is simply C1 is 1, C2 is 1, C3 is 1. The conclusion is that the answer is yes to our problem. And that's the end to this example.